The booster course pass for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was quite the success, and once again, we're looking at all changes and differences made for the returning courses in Wave 6 of the DLC. The third race of the Spiny Cup is SNES Bowser Castle 3. It's a scorching stronghold with menacing towers rising from a vast lava pit, having sharp angled pathways, crushing thwomps, controlled lava falls and timed lava geysers, steep anti-gravity ramps, and tricky paths along and atop tall walls. So how does the most recent update differ from past installments? Let's find out. Bowser Castle 3 for Super Mario Kart had bold sets of split paths, setting it apart from the other two belonging to the Koopa King in the game. But like its brethren, it was renowned for its 90 degree turns, thwomps, and lava hazards. The GBA version omitted the thwomps and some other elements, but it otherwise was much the same. Tour's revamp gave great depth to the course, making small adjustments to its layout while bringing back some of the thwomps, evolving the split path options, and even including bone piranha plants. For Switch, this model was updated further with stunning effects, more dangers, and an anti-gravity section, and many other differences can be seen between each version. Let's start with the gameplay changes. Due to the restrictions on extra tracks, thwomps disappeared for GBA, as well as the dash panels, or zippers as they were called originally. Coins were moved to other locations, and there were far fewer item boxes too. With the exception of new raised battlements or crenellations in various places, edges along the Chemin de Ronde, or simply Allure, became traversable in Tour, allowing drivers and items to fall off. Just after the first corner, bricks were removed along the path, exposing off-road dirt that continued slightly beyond where the first ramp used to be. Adjustments were made to this whole stretch, both the positions of the ramps and where the path narrows and widens. Between the ramps that were updated to tour style, the lengthened platform became home to a lone thwomp. In 8 Deluxe, an anti-gravity panel was placed on the first ramp, and the thwomp was swapped out for several fireballs that hop overhead from the lava to the sides. Beyond this point in the redesign, more off-road dirt appeared on the right, with another patch on the left at the following corner. The first path split was arranged significantly, with various segments and ramps along the new incline. They were divided differently and streamlined, with new off-road elements, booster ramps for some spots, and even a lava geyser that periodically erupted from beneath a left grate installed on the far end. All boosted ramps lost their dash panels for switch, and the right off-road strip disappeared. Part of the pit on the left near the far end was paved over, ditching the ramp, while the right ramp was extended to cover the pit. Occasionally, a fireball pops up here. The entire southwestern part was enlarged and shaped just a bit differently, serving as the apex of the slope, with more dirt at the tippy top for mobile. But for the booster course, a couple of spin boost pillars were added here, with the region becoming grating without the off-road part. Transitional bricks were placed between the slope and the level part of the allure after, marking the end of the anti-gravity section. We can see in tour that the next stretch was modified, featuring a small divergence in the path, accompanied by more dirt, continuing parallel to its original position. The next wide area was made into a slight incline, with two thwomps and even more off-road spots. Now, the dirt shape at the new bend was altered to have simplified angles, and another thwomp was put here. Meanwhile, the thwomps after this point were offset. At the split passage in the GBA version, the ramp on the right path was removed. Interestingly enough, these routes were turned into true corridors for tourist remodeling, with tall walls that even allowed for riding on top of them using good driving skills. Unlike before, the barriers were divided into three segments, even incorporating a gap with lava. At the lower level, normal ramps in the middle were ditched, replaced by a single boosted ramp over the lava along the central route and a normal type on each side following a dash panel. Boosted ramps were positioned at the ends of each wall segment also, except the last two. In 8 Deluxe, the boosted ramp between the dividers became a dash panel followed by a grating ramp. At the same time, boost panels followed by regular ramps on the sides were combined to be a boosted ramp on each side, and boosted ramps were added to the final segments atop the walls, with all flush with them rather than angled. The 90 degree angled turns at the next section were transformed in tour into a descending spiral ramp, with the ability to fall off on both sides. Guard blocks were installed on the left side for switch for more safety, and the steps of the ramp were made taller by scaling, preventing any reverse travel by racer or item. The final corners were shaped differently with Tour's revision, featuring the last of the off-road dirt. 
Bone piranha plants and pipes were placed in these affected spots. And a final ramp across lava was put at the edge, leading down to a lower level with the finish line ahead. For 8 Deluxe, the bone piranha plants were moved a little, and the shape of the left edge was tweaked for hopping off more easily, becoming a trick spot. The allure was widened below to accommodate for this modification. Meanwhile, the adjacent portion was turned into grating, with its caution stripes raised, enough to be tangible. The ramp was thrown out, but it's still possible to perform a trick off this spot. A pair of thwomps with coins on top was positioned at the lower level, allowing for yet another trick by jump boosting off them. It became quite busy here. There are nearly as many solely aesthetic changes too. The minimap had its updates as expected, but it's especially weird how the most recent version has parts cut out where the off-road dirt is. We had the usual general lighting, texture, and mild coloration differences as well, but more specifically in Super Circuit, most textures, including the background, became like those seen in GBA Bowser's Castle 1. However, the lava texture was made unique, and possibly the barriers were too. The directional arrows remained from the original, but as new textures not in any of Super Circuit's core tracks. For Tour's renovation, mottled clouds filled the sunset sky, and lone pillars were placed in various spots across the lava. Parts of the original stone arcade in the background made a comeback, as well as the dark mountains. But the most prominent new feature in the distance was the active volcano. Larger castle elements were erected closer to the track, consisting of Bowser-themed towers and large platforms with lava falls coming from beyond grates. One was level, while the other formed a slope, but both contained flowing lava on top. Smaller castle elements were incorporated within the course, but we'll get to those in a bit. The random missing brick aesthetic and the brickless normal surface along the allure were replaced by a consistent pattern, except at the aforementioned dirt patches. And the white arrows painted in certain spots before were cleared out. Lava bubbles, not to be confused with the potaboos with eyes, did not return in the redesigned lava. Instead, embers appeared, floating up from the lava in every location. For Switch, raster clouds appeared under the modeled type. Everywhere, lava is brighter now. Lava falls flow much slower, while bricks became visible beyond their grates. Timed lava geysers multiplied, shooting up in out-of-bounds spots around the track. And lava bubbles returned, with steam and heat wave distortions as new special effects. No longer glowing red-hot, all diamond grating became hexagonal, incorporating reinforcement bars beneath larger types that ran perpendicular to existing support posts. But the red-hot glow of cracks in the bricks does show under thwomps. At the starting line, the original 32 by 3 checks stayed the same for GBA, but they were stripped of this weird, well, strip. A course banner was introduced in Tour, consisting of the classic logo in red on white background, with a black and white checkered border. This was held by ropes and attached to tower-like columns on new bases, complete with torches on each. And the starting line's checks decreased to 17 by 3 in white and two shades of red. Up ahead, an arrow sign was propped up just before the first ramp, unique to the Tour version. And the brick allure after it was swapped out for diamond grating, with caution stripes on the sides where the new lava falls formed and support posts for larger types. This was a design borrowed from the grating found in the GBA Bowser's Castle tracks. Another arrow sign was situated at the start of the ramp field around the corner. Now, two safety cones can be seen just before the lava geyser obstacle. Yet another arrow sign found a temporary home at the shift in the path beyond the sloped sector for mobile. The tall walls later were adorned with torches on sconces, while a set of six torch towers were positioned to run parallel to them. Another barrier with torches lining it followed the contour of the descending ramp, revealing to be the side of a giant lava sluice. And one last arrow sign was placed by the left bone piranha plant only in tour. How elusive. There were some auditory changes made particularly for the booster course. No real environmental sound effects existed until the addition of audio for bubbling lava, torches, and lava geysers. Maybe the bone piranha plants added in tour count, but they certainly make different noises now. What aggressive little monsters. What's also aggressive is the music for SNES Bowser Castle 3. It's metal, quite literally. The composition is based on the iconic theme from Super Mario World's final boss battle, the Evil King Bowser, featuring similar instrumentation. These arrangements all boast electric guitar, orchestral hits, and fierce percussion. 
The original has a limited range of instruments giving that Super Mario Kart flavor thanks to the Akai S1000, a 16-bit sampler from 1988 that Soyo Oka used when composing the soundtrack. It still managed to produce this nod to metal from the early 90s. The GBA version was arranged to optimize the piece for the hardware, balancing traditional instruments with digital. Electric guitar in the intro replaced part of the synth brass. Square waves serve as the other part, harmonizing with the guitar in the A section and substituting the organ in the B section, with mild adjustments to how they're played, especially in the intro. A few other tweaks were made to the presentation, but nothing too drastic. That's a neat twist. The switch arrangement ramps up the heavy metal to 11, with major changes to the presentation, as well as two mini minor tweaks to count. It goes all out with the percussion, introducing open hi-hats, tom-toms, and crash cymbals. The intro shifts the timing of the broken chord layers, making the guitar and bright synth distinct. A wailing guitar adds attitude just before the A section's main melody, which is a guitar lead with a second guitar playing the harmony. Rapid synth organ arpeggios fill this part too. The technique changes in the B section, with the percussion switching up to quick, successive kicks popularized with metal. Here, the twin guitars double up the melody with an up and down glissando on synth, descending guitar slides, and wailing. The classic organ is almost drowned out from the power. Finally, before the loop back to the A section is a lengthened drum fill bridge. That tempts us to do some headbanging like true metalheads. As a bonus, there's a shorter intro in the final lap variant of the course, while everything else is as expected. So metal. And that's about it for all changes we found in SNES Bowser Castle 3. This is an incredible evolution of the track that retains most of the original layout, doing Super Mario Kart's final representation justice. It provides great additions, such as the depth with anti-gravity, improved path splits, and better thwomp placements, reducing the monotony. But what do you think? Have you found any notable changes that we missed? Let us know in the comments below. And of course, stay tuned to Game Explain for more coverage of the Booster Course Pass for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and other things Nintendo too. Thanks for watching. Until next time, ciao.